Among the secrets footwear hide, there is the use of fabrics for reinforcing. The final shape given to the shoe originates from the plastic last used for, it, for the construction. But uh, the way to help the shoe to retain the shape after the lasting depends basically on a very good quality level of pattern making and for sure about uh, the use of fabrics for reinforcing which are stuck on one side of the upper pieces just before the assembling by stitching. These materials generally are used but they are invisible uh, either for pumps, for uh, men's shoes and for boots and sandals too. Uh, but generally they are used basically when the material is very thin, very delicate or too much stretchable in order to be able uh, to help the shoe as I was telling you to retain the shape after the lasting and when using it. In this slide I just took a couple of pictures of uh, two examples of pump so with the same style the same pattern but the goal is to show you that they have been lasted and just delasted after a few minutes. So this is exactly the uh, main purpose I would like to talk about. Um, after delasting the shoe, uh, let me say after a few minutes, if the reinforcing it is well attached of good quality and working well, the shapes uh, could be retained easily uh, at this stage. In this picture, on the opposite, I try to show you uh, just a couple of examples of patterns as I put on the title, board patterns ready to cut out upper and reinforcing pieces. Basically, we have two uh, overlaying pieces. This one, the first, is the one used to cut out the upper material, and the second is the one used to cut out the reinforcing material. Basically, these type of patterns are a little bit uh, different. Slightly different means that uh, in this area, so in this area along the lasting allowance, the fabric reinforcing is uh, slightly shorter in order to unease or to uh, assure a perfect cementing against the insole for lasting. On the opposite, on the top, is again a little shorter, about 4 or 5 millimeters, in order to be able to fold the edges properly during the construction of the upper. Here are some materials. These materials are, first of all, several uh, suppliers uh, like uh, APC can really provide different thicknesses, different weights, uh, different height because normally they are supplied in rows. And uh, the most important, um, uh, let me say, concepts uh, to keep in mind is that, first of all, uh, generally, these type of materials could be made by uh, natural fibers like cotton or artificial fibers like polyester. Um, generally the way to build up uh, and to weave the threads is made by the traditional warp and weft, uh, but the most important thing is they could be sticker or self-sticker and thermoadhesive. Obviously the second solution it is the most advisable. Why? Because as we can see, uh, not so clearly because of the picture of course, but this side is generally uh, glued and completely coated by different types of uh, uh, glue. It could be uh, EVA based powder, it could be uh, a melted ba PU based glue, but in any case this type of powders or this type of glue will be heated. Thanks to the heating and the pressure they will penetrate into the fibers of the back part of the upper material so this way they can reinforce the upper material in order to avoid or to reduce some issues that we can see later in some videos. Uh, basically these materials must be, as I was telling you, uh, stuck on the back face of the upper material. The upper material could be leather, could be synthetic, could be textile, but I want to focus uh, in particular on leathers. In this case I put a couple of examples of leather. Both are cow leathers, an entire leather and a half cow leather. In any leather we have stretching lines and tightness lines. So basically in the cutting department of a shoe factory, cutters uh, either using uh, traditional systems or CNC machineries, they need to understand the way to place, that is to nest the pieces on the leather, because generally the lasting of the upper, as we can see in these pictures, is the so-called heel to toe, that is the lasting machine will pull the upper from heel to toe. So generally the purpose of sticking 
uh, uh, fabric reinforcing means that we have to contrast uh, the lengthening of the upper. So the same, for example, tightness line we can see on the leather must be found on the uh, uh, upper, uh, let's say, tightness. Um, as I was telling you, um, basically um, suppliers can uh, offer these materials in rolls. We have different thickness, different weights, uh, different uh, way to attach, to be attached to uh, the back face of the piece. And uh, let me say that um, also the height of the roll can change. Generally, mm, it could be one meter 20 centimeters, one meter 40, one meter 50, or in inches, 44, 42 inches. But in any case, we have to identify a tightness direction and a stretch direction. This means that, obviously, because of the way these threads uh, uh, have been built up, uh, uh, according to some direction, we have a stretchability line. In another direction, which is exactly the opposite, we have the tightness line. So we have to be able, in terms of uh, uh, cutting pieces, to understand the way the, this material works, as uh, I, I was telling you. So uh, let me launch this short video to let you understand the way the operator is testing the material. So once the stretchability line and the tightness line is found, we are ready to cut out uh, the pieces. We can see now these two short video clips. The first one, as I put on uh, uh, the, the title, we can see the reinforcing cut according to the correct way to cut it. So, after analyzing the directions, this is the stretchability, horizontally in this case. This is the tightness line, so the operator found a way to place in a correct way the pattern. As you can see, the operator is placing the pattern vertically. On the opposite, I'm going to show you the way to place the pattern for reinforcing cut in a wrong way. So the material is exactly the same. So we have seen that horizontally the operator found the stretch line, but in this case the way to place the pattern is wrong because priority is given to the elasticity. So as the last thing will be made from head to toe, this type of reinforcing will not help at all the way to reduce the stretchability of the upper. Obviously, as we can see in this detail, when the upper pieces are split, each single piece must follow the correct way to cut it. So, going back to our example, the first example works well. Let me show you again because this is of fundamental importance. So, after finding the stretch line and the tightness line, the operator in the cutting department, in this case it's just a prototype and sample, so board pattern and hand cutting, start to cut out the piece this way. And obviously the corresponding quarter will be follow the same inclination. So going back to our examples, let me tell you that this is the correct way and this is completely wrong. When cutting the reinforcing according to the wrong direction, we will face some issues. I can show you some short videos to explain better the problem. The next step is obviously cutting the upper material. So by this video, we can see the operator who is testing the stretchability and tightness of the leather. In this case, this is a very thin material, is a, a black suede, very thin on goat. This is the second part of the upper. The second part of the upper will follow the traditional and fundamental rules for leather cut. 
and obviously at the end of the cutting the operator tries to test if the result works well or not. In the next video I'd like to show you the way the material it is attached to the back part of the upper pieces. In this case, a simple iron is good enough. The hot melt glue works by heating, so melting the glue, a little pressure. And let me show you a little detail. As I told you at the very beginning, along the lasting allowance, the um, fabric reinforcing, it is uh, slightly shorter, as it is uh, slightly shorter along the top line, because in this case, um, according to the system of the upper preparation, they don't want to uh, skive both upper and reinforcing. But it happens also the opposite. So in this case, the operator by ironing is attaching on the back part of the cow split upper the reinforcing, but if we notice along the top line, the two edges are exactly the same. Obviously, this means that in this case, both layers will be skived by the simple skiving machine. Before watching the skiving operation, I would like to show you again, after attaching the material, the way to test the tightness and the elasticity of this now new body of the upper. So it's a way to understand if now we can move on to have success in this operation. The skiving works very traditionally, the operator is showing the top line before and after the scanning. Obviously, the scanning operation works well if the quality of the glue and if the attachment of the backing is perfectly made against the surface of the upper. And now we move on to the core business of uh, this uh, particular operation. We can see now the main important operation, which is actually testing if our works is okay or not. This is the toe lasting. So as you can see the machine, the typical traditional lasting machine is pulling the upper lining and backing from heel to toe. And thanks to this little detail, I would like to show you that the top line, so the design, the curved the throat of the upper, it is exactly laying where I put a little dashed black dashed line as a reference. So as you can see, the reinforcing works well, the lasting machine pulls perfectly the upper, and we are not in this case damaging the design or deforming the throat. When the operator finds that everything is, is working well, will operate the machine for closing the toe. So this is the correct operation. To end this short lesson, I would like to show you some details about uh, uh, good result and bad result. For example, let me show you some other type of lasting. Look at that. This is exactly the same style of the upper. It is being cut out in Napa leather. So Napa is the softest material one of the most delicate, so we always need, we do need to reinforce it, but in this case, on purpose, we didn't put any reinforcing. So as you can see, there is a big gap between the uh, reference line and the final result, almost a centimeter. So even if the operator will try to release a little bit the pliers, we don't get the result. This is another example, even worse, because the material is softer and more stretchable, in this case, the material has, an, has not been reinforced, so it's not acceptable at all. And we have a third example. This is the same style, the same curve, believe it or not, but this is a calf test. In this case, I have attached uh, a backing uh, according to, obviously, the tightness and according to the stretching. Uh, line, but in this case I cut it in the wrong position. So the sides work well, but we don't get a perfect result about the length. There is a last a short video I would like to show you, which is this one, just a sort of slideshow about good result and bad result. Uh, first of all, 
we have the first example. This is the lasted upper with reinforcing. So it's well done and well acceptable. The next example is the same upper, believe it or not, exactly the same upper, the same ladder, the same line, but without reinforcing. So as you can see, there is a big gap as we have seen previously in the video. So not acceptable. Let's move on to a third example, which is the upper made in Newbuck. In this case is with reinforcing, but wrong tightness direction. So in this case, priority is given to the elasticity, but from heel to toe, so no good. Another example, which is even worse, as we have seen previously, so with reinforcing, but wrong tightness direction, and as the material is very stretchable, at the end, uh, the proportion of the front vamp is too short. So we are not only affecting the look of the shoe, but also the fitting of the shoe. To end up with this uh, slideshow, I would like to show you, finally, a perfect result. This is the upper, lasted upper, with correct reinforcing and perfect tightness control. So as we can see, uh, the backings or the interlinings or the fabric reinforcings are of fundamental importance to be able to retain the shape according to the style and to uh, obviously retain also and preserve the fitting of the shoe.